Hi, I'm Jackie. And I'm Seth. And this is Never TMI. Where we talk about real things. And nothing is ever off limits. Nothing. Did I ruin that? I feel like that sounded different than all of our other intros. Probably, but that's okay. Limits. Well, good day, everyone. Well, well, well. (laughs) Um, It's great to be back with you. Thank you for... All those who tune in to the podcast here, and we are just ecstatic, <laughs> ecstatic, what is ec-static. it? Ecstatic. 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 Expresso. You guys probably know by now that my grammar skills are it's so not, par. It's not even <laughs> just, it's your pronunciation of certain <laughs> words, like. But that's like knowing like the English crown. grammar. Crown. 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 I it's feel like that's literally just a crown. Fun. That's like a. A regional thing. No one calls it a crown. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure someone recently said, I'm from here too, and I call it a crayon when we were in Nashville. I'm pretty sure. Well, crown? Yeah. Anyway. Um, I grew up calling crayons. Crayon. Crowns. It's a crayon. That's how you spell it. A crayon. A crown. Anywho. All right. <laughs> um, hello. You. Yes, we're excited yep. that you're here. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, man, it's a beautiful day today. <laughs> well, right, I don't guys, know. I didn't want to like get right into it, but I guess we can get right into it. That's yeah, fine. We can get into this one. All right. All right today all right. we're going to talk a little bit about parenting. Um, more specifically, probably discipline mm-hmm. and. Probably. Which I feel like we haven't talked about parenting much on here. We haven't, and uh, honestly, it's probably from a place of insecurity. <laughs> I, I feel like we have nothing to add. I like, feel like every day we just ask ourselves, yeah. what are we doing? Like, when we Literally. make it to the end of the day, it's just like, yeah, thank God we made it. But I will say lately, there <laughs> has been little wins. Like, I would say, you know, with Kennedy saying... um, I just or like, like may I please, or something like that. It's like, I feel like parenting is one of those things that you're just not getting the fruit of your labor yeah. for a while. And you know, You're right. We did see a little bit of fruit, but it's just, part of me wonders if that's just her maturity level, like, she, because she's getting older, but Yeah, but somebody has also, to teach her how to say, may I please, <coughs> and like, may right. I please be excused, or, you know, so it's like, where it, it's just, it totally is one of those things I feel like we we haven't like intentionally not talked about it on here, but I feel like we're like, what can we yeah. add it? Like we want this to be a place of somewhat value. And I feel like we're, we're just learning with everybody else, but there is beauty in that too. Like we're excited to talk about like just where we're at when it comes to even discipline, because it is something that we're continuously learning through and working through and reading about and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, we don't have, we, we never want this just to be a space of like, let us talk to you about, you know, all the things that we've learned and have already gotten through. It's like, no. Um, and Seth had a good point. Um, Cause in the car I was like, are we sure <laughs> we want to like talk about that? And he just was like, that's the point of it. And that is like such a reminder and I immediately was like, you're right. Yes, let's do it. Yeah, so today might not really be a value add, but (laughs) more of a sympathetic, empathetic. And even, yeah, just to give you. On parenting, because we. A conversation. We we botch this thing every day. So. Yeah. We're here just. It is what it is. Yeah, I guess we're here just to share a little bit of our journey in parenting. And if you guys can relate. Mm hmm. (laughs) <laughs> I hope you can relate <laughs> yeah. because it's well not I'm easy sure thing. it's like the, it's just a conversation yeah. I feel like I learned from other people's and I'm just curious I'm like how do you discipline your kids and what does that look like for you and like it's a very um interesting topic for me personally like when it comes to other people mm-hmm. so even just getting an insight into like oh yeah this is how we handle things and this is why um kind of where we came from discipline wise so we just literally are, are going to dive in and talk about it. But um, I guess we can start with that. It's like, where, where did we, you know, yeah, how like were we disciplined brain. essentially? Yeah. Um, so you can go first if you'd like. Yeah. So I definitely came from a very, well, I should say, a, yeah, a very strict home in the sense that, um, 
you know, I, d- I felt like I didn't really have a ton of room to like just be room for error. crazy or stupid. And, and, um, and I actually, I really respect my parents for that. Like looking back, I really respect my parents for the level of discipline that they, that they instilled in us and that they were, you know, required of us to act in a, you know, a respectable manner, I guess you should say. Um, definitely got spanked as a kid. Was it's, that like your main form of discipline or like how often was that or was it? Like- I don't, that's the thing. It's like, I feel like I remember getting spanked more than my parents do because when I've asked them before, it's like, <laughs> they've always said like, yeah, Seth didn't really get spanked that much. And it's just like, <laughs> you're like, Really? <laughs> the ones that I do remember, though, they were, they were good spanks. That's heavy. for sure. Yeah. But, <clears throat> and I, I, I guess I wasn't. I probably wasn't a terrible child. Mm-hmm. Like, and so maybe I feel I, like you didn't really do much until you were older. Yeah, that and that's probably the the case. So like the stuff that I did do, I it was when I was older and mm-hmm. you know, I was doing it relatively secret secretively yeah (laughs) and um so but i definitely you know my parents spanked us i'm sure i was in timeout quite a bit actually my parents would carry a my mom would carry a uh like a you know from a hot glue gun you have like hot glue gun that just sounds so terrible to me yes well, it's like it's like the the concept of like a. Well, spoon. it was that time back then anyway. Like there were teachers who carried around rollers that would, you know. Well, we're not that old. That well, I'm happened. saying your parents. <laughs> that happened to your parents. Oh, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like that was their. Yes. That's what they knew. You right. know. Yeah, and so that you know they definitely. I remember my mom would carry a hot glue, a hot glue gun stick, like, that was ouch. like the twelve inch, you know, quarter inch round. And that thing, you could whip that, and it, that's what... I mean, yeah, ow. Like, uh, so I do remember that, like, if we were out in public. It's traumatizing. Um, but at home, you know, if it was... Out in public? Well, not in the public, but, like, oh, in, like she would have wow, it with her in the okay, car. Okay, like, okay. If we act up, like, getting mm. a spank in the car, that's what she would use. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it would be, you know, like a wood paddle at home. Okay. And, uh... The old man got home. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the big guy. <laughs> so. That is scary. But, yeah. I okay. Mean, wow. Well. That was a lot of, you know. And I, again, I can't say that So, do you remember much often. of, like, when you were way younger? Like, you said you remember timeouts. Like, what about when they were, like, you were, like, three to six? Was I, it? I probably don't You don't remember. remember. <laughs> That's fine. I, I mean, yeah. I don't remember much either. From that age, I... I I don't think my parents did the timeout thing. We pretty much, we, yeah, my parents were extremely, I wouldn't, like, I. they were very strict. They were strict, but I remember more so our discipline being so aggressive when we were a little bit older. So when we were younger, I think we just, we were pretty free to, like, we kept to ourselves because there were so many of us. And we were pretty free to like, we we're outside a ton and we just, like, I remember it was fun and, but I do remember there was absolutely like a, an expectation, especially in public. There were so many of us and that was something, yeah. um, especially with my dad, like we, there were so many events that we went to or had to be at or traveling and all that. And I mean, I remember us traveling like, it was like a team that it was literally the bags, the kids, the whatever. It was like, I just remember like taking up a whole seat row, <laughs> like in the airport. And there was just an expectation of like, mm-hmm. you're not, I, I don't remember necessarily. I, I've talked to them about it. Cause I'm like, why weren't we like whining and crying and I'm hungry and all this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm sure we did, but I don't remember, like, I always remember, like, it was like, oh, that's just not an option. Like, we we don't do that. That's not how we act. That's not what we do. And we were definitely spanked when we were young. Um, and it wasn't, like, a crazy yeah. or anything. What? Well, when I think about it, too, it's like, 
especially with a family as big as yours. Yeah. They're really, like, to have some sense of order, there yeah. really probably isn't any other way to do it. Like, oh, if you absolutely. had seven kids that were just, you know, absolutely. off the walls, like, that would be insane I mean, for any yes, occasion. Yes, yes. So, Something my mom always said was, like, if you can't picture it with five, four or five kids, like, don't let it fly with one kid. And mm-hmm. that. Such a good. It's, it was because they knew they were going to have a lot of kids. They wanted a lot of kids. And so she's, like, at a restaurant. Like, if one kid is throwing a tantrum and they're doing all this kind of stuff, what? How would you say that? Restaurant? A restaurant. A restaurant. It's a restaurant. A restaurant? It's not restaurant. I've it's a never. restaurant. There's an AU in there. I actually don't quote me on that. I'm not percent sure. But anyway, it was like, if you're at a restaurant, then, and and I can't picture like five of my children acting like this kid is, then let's nip it in the bud right now. Because yeah. um, then every kid also is looking to... Mm. We should have had, we should have my parents on an episode. That would be very interesting. They that have so great. many kids and <clears throat> a couple of people have said that actually. And that just came to me. It's like, why are we talking about this? But anyway, um, yeah, so many things I feel like that they really didn't have much of a choice to do with their lifestyle. And so there was definitely an expectation. I remember anywhere we went, um, whether, uh, a family friend's house, an event, people, I mean, like at least 10 people would come up to us and be like, oh my gosh, or my parents and be like, your parents, your kids are so well behaved, this is shocking, whatever. Um, So yeah, we definitely were spanked. We definitely, like my dad was pretty creative with his punishments, but that wasn't until we were a little older. Um, But I get it, like they, they did what they had to do. And it, they were very much so like, even if I talk to my dad now, which we have, like when it comes to our kids, like we, he was very, um, it's like, that is the responsibility it's of the parent. Like it is such an important time that like two to five age, um, it just totally sets the tone for like respect and, Mm -hmm. um, what's what what are you going to accept in your home like is this acceptable or is it not that's where that is decided it's so much harder when they're seven eight to be like you can't tell mommy and daddy no it's like what the heck are you talking about like yes I can't um so at that age is when I mean he said he would like kind of follow us around and just look for opportunities to teach us and to parent us or if need be discipline us and that's you know he wasn't home super often when we were younger but that was definitely like a ma- that was at the top of his list when he was home we were all whether it, we're we're unloading the dishwasher learn just anything we could learn to do anything he could use as a teaching moment he would and so that's kind of how he was and then my mom was definitely a little bit more lenient. I would say she was kind of the one that was like, okay, this is a bit too much or okay, Mike, they are five or whatever. Um, So that, you know, I feel like as any typical mom, that was sort of her role. She was always like on his side, but you know, kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the mom. Um, So yeah, I would say, discipline wise spanking was definitely the go-to that was like the number one um but we would do soap in our mouth we'd have to choose some soap we would have to go to bed early like go up to your room and you're in bed and it's literally the sun is shining and you hear kids playing outside um so it's just that kind of stuff and then in public same thing they were and there was no question about whether they would be consistent about it or not we would walk straight to the bathroom and get a spank there too so um yeah. No, that's interesting. I think you made a great point there. And I, I guess just for, you know, the sake of everyone who's listening to this, we're really talking from like the perspective of parenting and disciplining kids who are the ages of three and one. Or, yeah. You know, three, three and a half, one and a half. Like, so it's just kids. Yeah. Yeah. These are like very young kids. So I'm sure, you know, and that's what I guess we've seen as we, you know, so like I get, and uh, maybe I'm moving too, f- too fast. Jumping the here. gun, jumping the gun. <laughs> but yeah, if 
you know, I guess taking those experiences as kids, as we were raised mm-hmm. from our parents, I feel like we then entered into parenthood, mm-hmm. like pre-parenthood Yep. with, you know, that's our background. That's what we remembered. Mm-hmm. That's what we've witnessed growing up. So like, you know, then we, we take those and we try to say, okay, these are the things that we want to do with mm-hmm. our kids. And this was before we ever had a kid. Yeah. And, and so we kind of, you know, definitely some, some things I think that we liked and respected and also yep. some things that we thought we would do differently Yeah, going into that. But something that you mentioned that I just want to, I guess, before I forget about it, is that there's a difference between parents teaching and disciplining. Mm-hmm. And I think that's such a key concept that we... Like, I, I feel like discipline really has been such a progression and an, an totally. evolution just as... Such as a learning our, experience. Yeah, and it's just like as the as our kids grow older, like, we're constantly evolving. It's mm-hmm. not like there's one plan that you put in place day one and no. this is the this is it the for... The best way or the right way or the wrong way. Right. Well, so there's it's, definitely wrong ways. But. It's definitely been like a moving target. Yeah. And like having to constantly adjust just given circumstances or you know date like you know what yeah. happened in the day did they take a nap like are yeah. they super hungry like have they had you know have they had a chance to eat today like so many things to take into account and especially as at a young age like really giving some gr- some grace you know obviously there's there's definitely a point. Well, I think defines. grace is just as important as discipline. Like it's it absolutely is necessary. Right. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is discipline isn't always teaching and teaching isn't always discipline. Yeah, absolutely. And so like those are those are definitely two different concepts that it sounds like you know, and just from knowing your dad, he He definitely he, did both. He yeah, and it's like he I, I'm sure he knew the difference in a really you know he's following he's following you guys around for a reason. Yep. To teach, but also to discipline. Yeah, it's like there was. It wasn't like, you know, he's following us around, and that sounds aggressive. He was. He just. He was very intentional, and even even to this day, he will tell me with, as a with pa- the grandkids <laughs> with the grandkids. <laughs> yeah. He will tell me as a parent, like if I ask him, my parents are just the best to me, and I'm so thankful for them, and um. I will go to the grave just saying that like I I feel very thankful and blessed and they're not perfect but to me they are. Um that's not true. They're not perfect and they're not perfect. <laughs> but all that to say like I I really look up to them and respect them. Um and I'm just thankful and so there are times that I'm asking them like what do you think? And that's not to say that I will take every little thing. Cause we're very different. Like I'm very different from my mom. So it's not to say everything that they do. I'm like, great. I'm writing it down. And I'm like, Oh, Seth, let's do this. But, um, I do care about their opinion. And so I remember talking to my dad and I think I had asked like, what did you do when we, when all like the cousins were playing like us and then our, our cousins and friends, if we were like, you know, we, we went to like Green Lake. It was kind of like my mom's side of the family reunion every year. Like, what would you do? And he was like, I mean, obviously when we were older, we had a lot more freedom. But when, when we were younger, he was like, oh, I was right there. Like I, you know, some of the biggest, most pivotal things can happen or like interactions can happen or like teaching moments can happen when, you know, you're with your cousins or with family and all that kind of stuff. Like not, maybe not at school, maybe it's with your, um, you know, someone you see all the time, whatever. So he was just like, Oh, I never, I would not leave you guys. I would not just let you go play in a different room. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like what? <laughs> like that, that sounds like awful. Like I, and I, at the moment I was really sitting at a table with my sisters and our kids were all off somewhere playing. And I was just like, okay, so let me go get Kennedy. Um, but like that was his mindset. And so it wasn't, he wasn't like aggressively like looking for an opportunity to discipline us, but he was very much so intentional about like, oh, you, you know, you responded to her like that. Kennedy, come here. You know, when somebody or Jackie, come here, whatever. 
you know, when someone says this to you, instead of doing this, you can do this because we always want to whatever. So like there is a big difference. And I even remember you, didn't you either read a book or something recently talking about like uh, teaching and discipline or am I making that up in my mind? No, no, I feel like I I just remember you coming to me with that thought. Well, yeah, it was definitely like an epiphany. Yeah. Of like, where you notice the difference. You're like, I don't always, it doesn't, it's not necessary to always discipline. That's not necessarily going to teach her anything sometimes. Right. And there, and I think it was more just the reality of life with Kennedy. Probably just, Mm -hmm. I think I'm, there was probably a moment where I was just like, I'm disciplining her for something that, well, and we, I guess we, we kind of alluded to this at the beginning, but the other day Kennedy was like acting extremely polite, like mm-hmm. more than normal. But it's all the stuff that we're trying to instill of like for saying, two years please, now, saying, yeah. Thank you, like, and not saying you know saying may I please, like putting it in a full sentence, mm-hmm. and it was just like wow. And we literally looked at each other. It was like one that was a great job. Mm-hmm. Two, like that is literally what we've. And just the concept of like, you know, I I think when you, you look at a kid, but then you look at your own life and there's a, there's so many parallels to like, Mm -hmm. I I guess sports comes to my mind, like football, like the amount of reps that you have to put in to get something down. It's kind of the same concept of like, and this is just the way that I think about it, but like Kennedy, Kennedy. Like she, I have to be able to teach her Mm -hmm. to do the things or to act in certain ways because she doesn't automatically know Mm -hmm. this. Like straight out the womb, she has, you know, she's bent to go off and do, to lie, to slap someone in the face. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's just like the natural human reaction. Mm -hmm. Like Evan, her natural reaction is just to have the biggest tantrum because she to hit you <clears throat> to scream yeah. in your face to push you away and so like we're we're teaching them to respond in mm-hmm. different ways and not to just react based off their feelings yeah and so and that really especially at such a young age like there's so much that they're learning mm-hmm. and they're literally learning how to do all these things so it's just like it hit me the other day that and I said the other day, I don't know. It's when probably exactly. a couple months ago. Right. But it was just like the amount of reps that Kennedy has to get in until she's actually doing something that we're asking her to do all the time. Like it's a, it becomes like, like the a may I please, her. you know? Yeah. Like it's, it has to be thousands, yeah, thousands of reps, thousands of times that I'm reminding yeah. her or that we're teaching her, Hey, you responded like this Mm -hmm. next, like how do we actually respond? And I remember, I mean, we're, I feel like we're both constantly reminding each other of that too. I feel like literally daily we're just like, okay, but remember like we're for both of us, like even the other day I, I was having a really hard time and I, I would say typically I, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm definitely not more gracious, but I feel like, any mom it it, not any mom but at least in our case like I feel like I definitely have more of like a oh like she didn't mean to (laughs) or like something like that like I'm definitely not that way because I'm okay to discipline I know it's very necessary and healthy um but you know I would say I feel like I I fall kind of like how my mom was it's just like okay but think about this and think about that and okay Seth like she didn't whatever um but the other day I was I was like done. I literally was, I swear pregnancy adds like a, a new layer to things. I'm like, don't touch me. I'm like, it. I'm, I was just like, oh, I can't do this. And I like was, I walked into the kitchen and Seth was like, okay, just remember though, like how many times it's going to take for us to continue um, to teach her these, like it, it's, we got a long way to go too before it's just like second nature for her to say yes mommy yes mommy okay you know and it's like that's one of the things we're trying to teach her it's like you don't just um and we're okay with her asking why we're okay with all of that but it's like you know initially if mommy and daddy are asking you to do something you do it you can ask us why later you can ask us why on your way to go do it but like don't just stand there and be like why mommy or you know whatever it's like that's okay, but we're trying to teach her, like, 
mommy and daddy, because sometimes it can be dangerous. And I think that's the bottom line when it comes to that. It's like, if I'm telling you to get out of, you know, to stay on the sidewalk or something, it's like, I need you to stay on the sidewalk. Or if I'm telling you to come here, that's a huge one. Uh, if I'm telling you to come or there's a car or the, whatever, it's like, I need you to respond to mommy and daddy immediately. That's just, mm. it comes down to like a safety thing and also just respect. It's like, that is our role. And we always, <laughs> every now and then we're just like, who's in charge? You know? And at first she was like, can I am. <laughs> it's just like, no, mommy and daddy are in charge. And um, just for her to get to know that. So I, th I think both of us, like you were saying earlier, we came with, before we even had kids, premeditated, like, you know, opinions on how we were going to discipline our kids and what that would look like. And we were like, you know, we talked about it as much as we could, you know, without having kids. And then we had kids and it was like, whoa, there were so many things that I feel like changed and continue to change. What was your premeditative, like, you know, uh, yeah we, before we had kids what were you what was oh I thought I was going to be so much more aggressive isn't the word but I thought I was going to be a lot more structured a lot more discipline oriented I was very because like as as I would I would say my parents especially my dad was very discipline heavy very discipline oriented um, and I look back on that and although there were parts of that, that weren't fun, obviously, we also were very respectful. We also, there were wonderful things that came from that. Um, he did it in a very healthy way. So like he, we knew he loved us more than anything. That was never a question. And so it was like, oh, that's possible. Like they will know that we love them so much, but we are going to be heavy on the discipline very consistent, all that kind of stuff. And, um, I just felt like, you know, that's the way to do it. That's the healthy way. That's the best way because I wanted those things that came with it. I want them to be respectful of other people's things. I want them to, um, not quite, I want them to respect me. I don't want to be the parent that they're like, you know, I'm so embarrassed of you. Or like, Oh no, stop. <laughs> it's like, all the things that I felt towards my parents, I wanted from them. And um, so I, I just was like, yeah, they're going to be respectful. They're going to be quiet when they need to be. They're kind of like robots a little bit. Like that was just like my mindset. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the older I get and having my kids, number one, I'm not like there are so many things to learn. And I think I, I surprised myself with how open I was to other ways of di discipline, other, other, uh, truths and other possibilities. It's like, yeah, the way yeah. that my parents did it was a wonderful way. Is that going to work for me and my kids? Maybe there's also a million other things that could work too. And I think I shocked myself with how open I was to, like, I remember, you know, obviously I feel like both of us were like, okay, we will spank them. We will, do the timeout thing. We like, we just kind of were mm -hmm. experimenting a little bit, like what is going to work. And I just remember feeling like I'm, what if I mess them up? What if this isn't the right way? What if there's a better way? What if like, or gentle parenting and all that kind of stuff. It's like, I want to know it all because I don't like, I just have this dream of like our relationship with them and how they turn out and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think, at the end of the day, you do your best and you love them more than anything and they're going to be just fine. But like, mm. I think I was just like, wait, 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 let's stop it all and really question and be intentional about what we're doing um, and give some things a fair shot and research and do all that because like, I, I don't know. So I, I feel like we pulled back because well, of that. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> you you do a great job of reminding me about like the relationship because mm. I, I, I think I went into parenting before we had kids with a similar mindset, but probably way more discipline oriented. Yeah. So I was, I was all about spanking. Like yeah. I was, <laughs> I was Structure. probably even 
structure, but I was probably even advocating for spanking probably before they was. It, they were probably like too young to actually spank. Well, they were. I remember. I, <laughs> and I just it was just my ignorance yeah. of like you're a human. Mm-hmm. You're gonna learn eventually, but not. And yeah. that was something Jackie always reminded me of. Like she's only two, two at the time. Like, and it's just like. She's I remember two, I called my mom. We were in Indiana. Doing. Yeah. And it's like, well, she she can. And, and it's not to say that, you know, I'm not saying that there's not reasons to do it. Yeah. But, like, you, those are the things you really have to, like, <clears throat> and that's the other point. Excuse me. <clears throat> Discipline, I think, it, it it's unique for each individual. Not mm-hmm. every kid is going to respond to. No. Yeah to discipline in the same way and have the same results. So like yeah. you, it is a very, you know, it's a moving target. It's something that you really have to put the time in. Like you're saying, yeah. like knowing other tools in their two belt, other than just a paddle or a time. Absolutely. Like you got to get creative and you got to yeah. know what, like what pushes their buttons. Like for Kennedy, you know, I was all, I was gung ho about discipline and spanking and, yeah. You know, flicks on the hand or something like that. But it was like, I could flick her hand and she could laugh in my face. And you're just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I could yeah. withhold a treat or like yeah. dessert after dinner. And I she feel like you really got creative. You had to learn how to get creative. Well, that's what I was going to say is you really, you did a great job of helping me to see, oh, there's other ways and helping me open up to you know, being open-minded to other forms of discipline. Mm-hmm. And I say that, though, because you you would always remind me of the relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, when you, when your daughter, and that's the other thing, daughters and sons, I don't know what it's like to discipline a boy. Yeah. So I'm, my, my expertise yeah. is literally with girls. And I will say that's probably where I missed the mark initially because I'm yeah. thinking more boys discipline spank like very yeah. regiment milit I don't want to say I'm a militant but like you no, know yeah. that kind yeah. of like style high expectation where daughters it's like I need to show a lot more love here and emotional e- and yeah. dramatics but and it's all like that. what is your what's your relationship going to look like when your daughter is 18 mm-hmm. and you've like are you disciplining in a way that is conducive to maintaining that relationship for yep. those 18 years. Yeah. And so I guess. Not that you're going to discipline the same for those 18 years, but just like. Right. But like, so that, you know, whoever you want them to be in 18 years, you're yeah. still going to have an active voice in their life. You're yeah. not going to just be like a cold shoulder or just a disciplinarian yeah. or just someone who. Well, I got shaped you to this them point. to be who you wanted them to be. Right, and it's like, no, I want to have a relationship with them. I want them to feel comfortable and open mm-hmm. to like come to me. And so it's like, you know, those are the things that it, you you start to question. I guess it's like if I'm being so overly strict and mm-hmm. so disciplinarian and so militant, like, am I really going to drive out the relation yeah. portion of this relationship so that? Yeah, maybe she's yeah. saying please and thank you, but at the end of the day, she can't stand she to be wants around to you. get away from or you. Or she's afraid of you. I think that was a big thing yeah. for me. It was with spanking, you, the hardest thing for me is and was like, I don't, we're not raising robots. Like, you can make a kid do whatever you want them to do if you're as aggressive if you're aggressive enough you know what I mean so in my mind I was like well of of course they're going to respond well to that but like and I will say even looking back that was one of the things that I realized maybe in a more negative light like I always looked back at my childhood and was like man they just they really did it so well and they did but you sacrifice something and I think one of the things that when I do look back at all of my siblings, we've talked about it many, many times. We all have kids. We all talk about discipline. And we all discipline differently, which is very interesting. But we also respect each other and just how each other does it, and um, which is important. But I, I look back and there was such a sense of 
respect and reverency, but there was also fear. Like there was also, and, and it wasn't the healthiest fear. It was not like necessarily like a healthy fear and, and that's never, a, that's sorry, a go good ahead. point to note though. There's, there is such thing as a good fear. But sure. Also, but fear, you know, that's a very, yeah, like fine a line. fear of the Lord is like a, a it's like, mm-hmm. I'm aware of your power. I'm aware of your control. Um, but I'm not afraid of you Mm -hmm. that there's a big difference there. And so, um, with my dad, there was, I am a little afraid of you and what you can do. And he, I can confidently say he never like crossed the line physically with us at all. Like he, I mean, never was he like abusive, not even close, Mm -hmm. But I think his seriousness and and the consistency, it was like, whew, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble. Like, I literally don't want to get in trouble. And I don't really know what I'm going to get in trouble for or what's going to, you know, whatever. And again, we always knew, he always prefaced every time we got spanked. It was like, you know, this is because I love you so much and all that kind of stuff. So there was never a question there. Like, do you love me or not? It was just like the way that we all felt. It was like it was a little robotic and it was a little um, like I did not necessarily feel like I could be fully myself when I was a young kid. Now he's one of my best friends and all of our kids can say the same. So it's like, we turned out fine and that's great. But like there for us, I feel like, you know, I was like, I do want there to be a little bit more of like a comfortability and a friendship. Um, for especially being a daughter it was like I want that for you and I want that for our girls for them to feel a little bit more comfortable even if they are which was like a shift in my mind but even if they are like oh dad stop like you're so embarrassing I literally was like I would get lit up if I ever said that so it's like but would I see plenty of like father-daughter relationships that were like that that were healthy and fine and fun and it's like so I think, I think we just, you know, having kids and having these conversations and kind of like thinking about like, okay, she, like what we want, what we envision. And just like you said, like when she's 18 years old, it's like, what is that relationship going to look like? I feel like you learned to get really creative and, and kind of open yourself up to the possibility of like, okay, maybe like there's a balance, like the, it's, it's you can raise or we can raise these girls to listen and respond perfectly and to do everything you want them to do. But like, you know, what's the cost of that? And that's, that's something I feel like that, you know, keeps the conversation going between us of like, are we doing, is this the best thing or maybe taking a second before we discipline them? And I don't know. Yeah, I also think, too, it's important to, as a parent, to understand what your role is and what your priorities are. Yeah. And so, like, as a parent, you know, and, and as parents, we have a huge desire to be great, great friends with our kids yeah. when they're older. Yeah. However, I think the the truth of it, though, is in this season – and it's not that we can't be friends with them, but our primary role is to be a teacher yep. and teaching and teaching in a way that includes discipline mm-hmm. to, because ultimately we're trying to mold them to eventually leave the home yeah. one day and go out and be people in mm-hmm. this world, people of impact people of influence people to go out and do whatever that they're Mm -hmm. called to do like that that's that's our view of how we're raising our kids yeah and that is more important than just being their friend today and i think even when you think about love like the concept of love Mm -hmm. love isn't just a a borderless boundary list yeah go out and do whatever you want because i love you it's creating and holding these boundaries knowing that there are good things out there for you and there are also bad things Mm -hmm. and you need to learn to discern and decipher what is good and what is not. And that, that is, is true love, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's limited freedom knowing that if you do these things, 
this is good for you and if you don't do these things that it's bad and so well it's just like you know kennedy asking me <clears throat> for candy all day long if, if i gave it to her just because i love her that's not love you know um i know better than her that that's gonna make her sick that that's not good for her that's not good for her in the long run it's not good for her teeth it's not good for her stomach like we yeah that is our role and i th- i do think both of us have kind of accepted the fact that like while yes we do want to be best friends with our kids one day um man it's that that might not be the time and i remember even in high school like yeah it's like a byproduct of doing of prioritizing those things first yeah i think friendship will be the byproduct of that in the, and in that's a season. that's a scary feeling to be mm-hmm. like absolutely does my kid even want to be around me do they like but that's where i feel like you know at, at least you and i feel like we have signed up to like yeah we're not going to be their best friend we might not be because we're not the parents that are going to be like yeah you uh, like if you cry long enough or if you're sad enough for it you'll get it like no that's not the case and even i mean I think of when they are in high school and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure <laughs> like, Oh my gosh. The, I, I know for a fact, like I, I just looking back on when I was in high school, it's like, there's so many things like wearing a belt that I didn't, I didn't want to, I'm like, no, who, who has to wear a belt? Like I want to whatever. And, and it's like, Nope, you have to wear a belt. And I hated that, but it's like, I appreciate it now, you know? Um, but in the moment I was like, I can't stand you. Like, this is annoying. You, there's going to be a million things that, you know, we're not going to budge on and not, not wearing a belt is not one of them at the moment, but like one day, um, we are going to have boundaries and maybe we'll be a little bit more strict and there won't be any sleepovers and there won't be this and that. Like, and I'm sure they're not going to love that. Um, and I think you have to make a decision to know. And I, I think this is something that we're aware of, something that I've talked to my parents about. It's like it, it's not the most fun to feel like you're upsetting your kids or they're, you know, you're not their favorite person. Or even, like even Kennedy's three. And I'm like, who's your best friend? She's like, this person is. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Like, it's like you, you want to be everything to them. Um, and it's, you, you kind of have to like bite the bullet and know that like, you know what, I might not be your favorite right now, but I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to give you my best. I'm going to like, that's the sacrifice that's worth it to make. If this isn't your favorite, it's not something I'm willing to budge on. And I was going to say, even this morning with Kennedy, like we were going to go to the park and sometimes we'll get her like a little oat milk hot chocolate if she basically like earns it or is sweet or whatever. Um, but you know, it, we were like, you got to eat your breakfast. You got to eat your whole breakfast. Um, Seth was very intentional about giving her barely any eggs. And it was like, you have, you have to eat all your eggs. So she ate everything else, but it was her eggs. And like she likes eggs. We're not giving her food that she doesn't like. And, um, she just did not want to, it was like, no, I just, I want to take three bites. I don't want to eat all of them. And it was just like, they have such little control. Obviously they're going to look for any control they can get, or they want to negotiate. Cause it's like, you know, you are the, we're the parents. Like they, they, they're trying to get any inch they can get. So it's like, I want to take three bites instead of all of them. And in my mind, I'm just like, that's fine. Like, can she just take three bites? And I was so thankful because I was literally going to sit there and like make these big bites and feed them to her. And just, you know, and Seth was like, no, Jackie, she has to learn like this. She knows how to eat her eggs and she knows that she needs to eat them all. And there's no question about that. She just needs to do that. Um, it wouldn't have been wrong for me to feed them to her. Like I can baby her about it. I can do all that. And that's fine. Um, but I was very thankful for his reminder of like, nope, she can do it. And this is a teaching moment. Like she, and we said, you don't have to eat your eggs. You're just not going to get a hot chocolate. And she clearly wanted the hot chocolate. So it was like, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's a sacrifice. It's like, I, I, yeah, this isn't your favorite, but I'm, I, it is my job and my responsibility, um, that I, I will answer to for one day, like, and I'm going to, 
I'm going to do the best that I can, whether you like it or not. And in love and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Yeah. I I also think too, something that we've learned is like, you know, there's definitely a time and a place to be the overbearing parent of like constantly following up or, you know, kind of just like, and I I feel like we always are watching, Mm -hmm. but then there's definitely those moments where it's like, I don't want to be the overbearing parent. It's like, totally. if we're with the cousins or even sometimes at the park, it's like, I'm always going to be watching you from a distance, but I also want to see like the stuff that we're working on and practicing at home. Mm -hmm. How do you go out and then do that in the public? And I think I'm just getting this sense that like, there's a, I don't know if anyone's coached or been a coach or if you remember a really good coach from your youth, but like parenting can, I, there's so many similarities to like yeah. a, a good coach. Obviously the, I think the most like similar is, you know, if you, if you believe in God, like God as a father figure yeah, and like seeing yourself as a son to that mm-hmm. or, or, you know, if you've had a really great relationship of a parent, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but if you haven't, I would definitely challenge you to think of like a, who's been a, a coach in your life that's been really good, mm-hmm. that sticks out to you. And like, I don't know, it's like sometimes there's those moments where it's like, no, we've been practicing and now it's game time mm-hmm. and now you have to go out and do it. And they might go out and fail. And those, yeah. you know, maybe not necessarily in the moment. Mm-hmm. But like after the fact, like if Kenny's at the pr- at the playground and I see something, like I yeah. might have to, <laughs> I might call her off the field and be like, "Hey, come yeah. on, hey, like you can't, you can't, yeah, talk like to your remember, kid you know." And then I'll send her back in or something. Or after yeah. afterwards, you know, having like a a summary or a recap, like I don't. There's just so many parallels to me, but like definitely giving them space too to learn, and I think that's that's also important, mm-hmm. like for kids to develop, there's so many opportunities for them to develop and just interactions with other yeah. kids like that. That's something I feel like we didn't really start doing till yeah. probably like Kennedy was probably delayed in that in terms yeah. of like friends and actually hanging she out was with like, people. I, like she literally was the definition of like a COVID baby. I feel like when she, she was, was like, oh, that's what it, you she know, was a COVID like baby. we didn't go to church. She hated yeah. it, it. was so funny. I was talking to my mom about this the other day. Cause I was like, that Evan is just fine going to her class at church. Like mm-hmm. Kennedy would scream her head off. Mm-hmm. And it was like the worst experience every time. And I'm like, it's cause you're not used to this. We didn't like start this until you were old enough to realize, like, I don't want to be with these <laughs> random yeah. people. Um, so she was, but I do feel like that made such a big difference. And even, even little things, it's like, she used to hit people like, and I've shared that before, but like, that was like Kennedy's thing. And it was such a frustrating issue because it was, just her flesh, like her doing what she wanted to do. And there were so many times and we would discipline her for it. But I feel like it wasn't until we like, we literally taught her how gave her options of how to respond other than hitting back. Like we kind of were like, we don't hit people and we're going to discipline you for it. And then like, don't do it again. And I feel like, and maybe it was just timing too. Maybe she like grew out of it I don't know but it was around the time that we gave her a solution and was like you can come to mommy and daddy and you can tell us that you know your cousin hit you or something and you say no thank you like and you walk away like that's how we're gonna handle that and we kind of like I don't know I feel like it somewhat empowered her in a sense but that's just an example of like a, a teaching moment instead of like whatever. And I remember when we were at our parents' house, the first time that she was like, you know, so-and-so hit me. And I was like, I'm so proud of you. Like, did you hit her back? No, you didn't. And it was just like, okay. So like, it it was just a reminder of like, we, we are the ones who are giving you these tools. Of course, you're going to hit somebody. If you're angry, that's what you're going to do. Like, so taking the time to be like, Oh my gosh. And then seeing the fruit of that over and over and over and be like, Nope, you hit back. But remember what we're supposed to do. You come find mommy and daddy and even give her an example of that, like walking it out for her and being like, you walk to mommy and daddy and you say, you know, so-and-so hit me and whatever. So like, I don't know. 
That reminds me, we watched something recently, and they were talking about the phenomenon of when you say don't do something, it's mm-hmm. like it's almost like highlighting to do it, especially for... Totally. I think they were talking for about their pilots. Brains. It was like when a pilot comes to land, it's like don't don't hit this. And in, inevitably, when you say don't, you end up hyper-focusing on the yep. don't, yeah. <clears throat> and therefore they would like miss the target. And it, he was relating it to parenting and kids. It's like when you can replace a don't do something with a do something, but like the the opposite good effect. Yep. It's like now instead of don't hit your sister, it's like go be. I'm making no. The, like the, go be sweet, a, the, a like real go example be though was her. her feet on the table recently or something like that. It was like. And we literally were at, we were eating and we were like, okay, like, how can we say this in a different way? Like, don't put your feet on the table. Cause she like leans back and just chills with her feet on the table. And it was like, instead of, and I don't remember if this was it or not, but it was like, okay. And st- instead of saying like, no, we don't put our feet on the table. It was like, okay, we put our feet in our chair. Remember our chair, our feet belong in the chair. And it's like, there's no, and it's like, oh, okay. Like, it's just mm-hmm. way less of a focus, but yeah. Either way, I feel like we're still definitely learning. We're still reading. Absolutely. Like we literally, we went to Nashville and Sean and Andrew were kind enough to give us the one, two, three magic book. Um, or that's what it's called. And it's just like a timeout method that we're literally trying. And it's actually working pretty well so far. We haven't even finished the book. Um, we're not even halfway if we're being honest, but like we've like looked into it and kind of <laughs> are learning how to do it. And until then are just like, okay, go sit on the stairs for three minutes. And, um, she's understanding it and, and she's learning, but it, it does. I think it's important to just stay open and to, to see that there's more than one way of doing things. And if you don't feel mm-hmm. right about something, like don't feel like, okay, I just need to do this because it's this the best way to do it. Um, and if you do feel confident in something, do it, stick to it and be consistent about it. And Mm -hmm. the fruit of that will come, but man, it's, it is discouraging, but we just kind of wanted to just share with you like where we're at with it and what we do and yeah, it's definitely stuff. It's a journey. And I think, you know, the other, the last thing that comes to my mind is just intentionality, like is, is probably the heart behind it all. And so choosing you have to choose to be an intentional parent but also like when it does come to discipline making sure that you're not disciplining from a place of anger yes and i think that is the most important that has detrimental effects yeah and just whether it's we've seen it or people we know Mm -hmm. you know it like discipline in itself is a good thing yeah but it can definitely be abused and done in a wrong way yeah and from our experience, I would say that we found, and this, this is something having, you know, a spouse that's on board to help you with that, because I mean, I would say probably daily, there are moments when you are just pushed beyond your limit Mm -hmm. and you want to discipline and your, your temper's hot and you go in to give a spank or, you know, to lecture them, like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from a place of anger. Yeah. But you can do those things from a place of like a calm Mm -hmm. and like this is the punishment. Like, you know, you know what the consequence is and therefore this is the consequence that's being delivered. And really letting the letting the punishment then speak for itself and not your emotions speaking. And I think that's where you can really create an environment of fear. Yeah, because if you have control, you don't have to get upset. You don't have to get angry. And I think that's the that's the hardest part of parenting is like it takes a lot of work and consistency on our end. And when I'm getting upset and when I'm it's because I'm missing something like I'm the one in control. I'm dealing with a three year old like I should not need to be like at my wits and like angry I should not be raising my voice. I shouldn't be like, okay, I got over here. Like, no, it's like that, that I'm doing something wrong if that's the case. And it's not to say that kids can't like make you upset when they do something crazy and you're like, what? But like, that's where the consistency comes in. If she does something and she knows she's not supposed to do it, it's my job to either stay calm and teach her and talk to her in that moment or to discipline her immediately. Like, it's not like, 
I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I'm not going to like argue with you. And then I'm angry and now we're getting in trouble. It's like, no, that's wrong on my part. You know what I mean? Like, I think that is important too. Um, oh, I was going to say one more thing, but I know we can wrap it up, I guess. Dang it. I don't remember. Oh, this is it. Um, the we were talking to our marriage counselors about discipline because we there was a phase where we kind of like disagreed and and we're still like just f- just so you guys know like we're still figuring it out like we're still learning there's not many things that were like i mean if if, if un- unless it's like unethical or like not good or healthy um but we're still open to different things like we're not um I don't know. We don't just do like one thing and that's the only thing that we do. Um, I feel like we're still growing and learning in that and just kind of exploring new things. Just like, obviously there's boundaries and stuff, but we were talking to our marriage counselors and it was like, okay, well don't spare the rod. We were talking about that, that verse in the Bible that is just very, I've heard since I was like five. Um, but then she responded, the wife responded it's a couple that we do it with what's the verse do you remember what it says the one that don't don't provoke your kids to anger yeah that because it it was like yes that's truth but so is this like don't provoke your kids to anger so i and i literally remember i was like maybe we're doing that like there are absolutely times where i'm like you're angry too. Like you're a human being, you're three, but you are angry and you're upset and you're annoyed and you want what you want. And I'm the one telling you no. So like there has to be an understanding there as well. And I think it kind of like disarms a little bit. And it's like, instead of me being like, you were, you better lose the attitude. It's like, no, you, I get that. And I'm so sorry. And you can be upset about that. We just can't act out of that. Like we can't hit people or tell mommy no, but like you can be upset. You're okay to be upset. It kind of like gives them a little bit more control. And I think the grace and the, the human aspect is important just to remember like, okay, like I'm going to discipline you and I'm going to be consistent out of love and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, like I want to make sure like, so said, like you don't want to be like the overbearing parent. I don't want to be like, for the sake of just disciplining you and like teaching you, like I want to make sure that we're doing it in a way where you're not just like, Oh, go away. You know, like I, I don't want that either. So we're definitely still figuring it out, but, um, you know, hopefully you got anything from this. If anything, just, it filled your little bucket of curiosity as to like where we're at with parenting or discipline and like how we do it and all that kind of stuff. I know I'm always interested. So, um, yeah, we, if you made it this far, we were really thankful for you tuning in and listening and good luck to you and your discipline journey as well. Yeah. And if you're a little bit like us, know that the journey is not always easy, but it will be worth it. Absolutely. We're in this together. Yep. So again, I am Seth. And I'm Jackie. This is Never TMI, and we are signing off. Peace out.